the puzzle that you mentioned in your presentation uh, at the British Council uh, uh, on the 18th, uh, you, s uh, you said that you know if um, overnight, by some magic, uh, everyone in India could speak English, there wouldn't be enough jobs for them. Um, could you sort of uh, elaborate on that puzzle a li little bit, and uh, what direction do you see that puzzle sort of morphing in the well, next I think few years? Uh, at the moment, of course, there's a huge aspiration, uh, which I think has started because of this, uh, the growth, of particularly in the IT sector and the BPO, and there, people have seen that there are jobs which uh, are not concerned, there are, these opportunities are not interested in your social background. So a new kind of demographic can actually aspire to those jobs mm. provided that they have English. Mm. And so English is being seen like never before as a, mm. uh, a language of opportunity in India, mm. even though I think it's unrealistic for most of the people embarking on an on a English mm. learning career now to uh, get one of those jobs because there are still not enough of them. Mm. But the services sector is beginning to uh, grow. Um, it's surprising in some ways that it hasn't grown faster. Uh, domestic tourism, for example, is about 10 times the size in terms of numbers of uh, tourists than the international tourism sector. And even the domestic tourism is requiring uh, people working in hotels and restaurants uh, who can speak English and indeed other languages. And we're seeing the growth in the retail. Uh, the people who are working in the IT sector yeah. are getting richer, they have more disposable yeah. income, they're going out shopping. Yeah. The shops in Bangalore, particularly the new, yeah. uh, larger uh, uh, shopping malls, mm. they want staff who can speak English and they're only recruiting staff mm. who can speak English. So now suddenly we're beginning to see job opportunities for English speakers much lower down yeah. in the, uh, the sort of professional hierarchy. Right. I think that's the absolutely uh, fascinating. Um, there has been a little bit of uh, anxiety, I think, about uh, uh, the comparison that you bring in uh, uh, between India and China. Um, I mean, that anxiety has mm. been expressed mostly in, in the popular press rather mm. than uh, mm. in, in within this conference. Uh, but um, can you just, uh, can I push you on that a mm. bit and uh, ask you that vis-a-vis uh, -vis China, is India uh, really falling back? Is it, is it really losing the advantage? Uh, it's, it, uh, to be honest, at this stage it's very difficult to, uh, to say yes or no to that. And in particular, since I've yet to do the, the equivalent study in China, which will right. give me uh, similar sort of quality data. Um, but I was just, just sounding a, a, an as, almost as an aside, a, a mm. warning yeah. bell there. And I think I say in the book something right. very cautious, like it may not be safe to uh, believe that uh, India has more English speakers than China mm. anymore. And the kind of uh, evidence I'm basing that on, uh, recent estimates by uh, linguists, for example, that suggest that both China and India now have around 330 million English speakers, mm. i.e. roughly equivalent yeah. numbers. Yeah. Now, n even 10 years ago, India had far more than mm. China. One wouldn't have been able to say China had that uh, mm. many. And what one can also say is that China is doing uh, really very well, particularly in the urban areas and amongst the middle classes, in growing the number of English speakers. They've invested hugely in it, and their new primary school uh, English teaching projects are, in some cases, working very effectively. So, I mean, I know from my own exp recent experience that I can go into uh, government schools in, uh, in, in cities in China and hold a conversation in, in English to 10-year-olds. Uh, David, in your report, uh, uh, you have, um, maybe it's because of the complex nature of the uh, problem you're looking at, uh, you have uh, said that, you know, it's difficult to draw conclusions. Um, when the book is uh, finally ready uh, in January or early, early next year, do you think uh, you will be in a position to draw a few um, hard conclusions, or is that uh, not well, we can draw conclusions uh, now. I think what we've just mm. done in the course of the mm. last two days is sort of check out the analysis. Mm. <laughs> mm. Um, and from that, I mean, I can write conclusions, but they won't be the kind of conclu okay. uh, hard conclusions that tell you exactly how to remedy the situation. Right. Right. Um, I mean, I think that is the, the, the problem. The, the, it's a genuinely intractable problem. 
which partly arises because of the complexity, the, the social uh, complexity of India, the demographic complexity. Uh, whatever might work in one place won't necessarily work in another place. And the way that sort of English has been kept amongst an elite group for so long is turning out to be one of the obstacles to sort of growing it, uh, to universalize it and give universal access uh, to English elsewhere. The Chinese haven't had that problem. Thank you, David. We were speaking to David Gradol, uh, author, broadcaster, and writer. Uh, thank you very much for being with us.